So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here and today in this video I want to show you a few cells from mammals, like for example we humans are of course also mammals, but specifically I want to answer the question why is it possible or rather how is it possible that even though the cells of a human being, even though they have the same DNA, so all of my cells have pretty much the same DNA, why is it still possible that the cells look so different and do so many different tasks? Well, if the DNA controls the cells, and if the DNA is the genetic information that controls the cells, and if all of the cells have the same DNA, then why are the cells so different? Hmm. That's a very interesting question. And at the end of the video, um, I would like to also talk about one of the big unsolved mysteries uh, of biology. And of course, uh, this uh, topic also relates uh, to the cells that I would like to show you today. Well, first of all, what do we see here in the background? This is the cross section of a kidney. And if you look very carefully, uh, then you're able to see the individual cells here. And those dark uh, red dots that you see here, these are the nuclei um, of uh, of the cells. So this is of course a specimen that has been stained and those white circles over here, this is, these are tubules where urine is being produced. So the kidney is there to filter the blood and to remove waste products among other things. Um, and uh, there are many, many uh, of these tiny tubules in the kidney. And here, uh, this is uh, the cross section. And let's uh, remember very carefully how the cells here look like. I would like to show you now the cells of muscle. And you're going to see that they look very different. So this here is now skeletal muscle or also known as striated muscle. And uh, these are very long muscle fibers. By the way, this is the same magnification. I'm using now my 60 times magnifying objective. And one of the very typical things is, is look at those uh, tiny stripes that you see here. Those narrow uh, yeah, horizontal lines. Um, this uh, gives the muscle a name. These are so-called striations. And these are the so-called the light and the dark bands. And they um, are there because these are protein, they're protein protein fibers there that cause the muscle to contract. But for um, our purposes, what I think is, is important is simply to appreciate that uh, the cells of muscle look very different, obviously, um, and that they um, perform, of course, a very different function, but still uh, they have the same DNA um, as all of the other uh, body cells. And here, for example, you can see the striations uh, quite well. And again, uh, why is that? How can it be possible that uh, even though the muscle cells have the same DNA, as the kidney cells that we've just seen, how is it still possible that they look so different? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to show you now the next slide. So let's uh, get it a little bit into focus over here. Okay, now here we go. Uh, look at those dark, uh, those, those dark structures over here. I mean, these are so-called osteocytes and we're looking right now at bone. This is bone tissue, compact bone. And those dark uh, those dark dots here, these are the bone cells that um, are able to not only make bone, but also break down bone and rearrange uh, the bone. And these osteocytes, uh, they um, can last for a very long time. I have uh, read somewhere that they can uh, yeah, survive many, uh, many uh, decades, um, so 25 years and, and even longer. So you can see that, um, yeah, there are quite a few of them here. And uh, they again look very different and they perform again very different tasks, but do I have to repeat myself now or not? Uh, they contain again the same DNA um, as uh, the other cells, as the muscle cells and the kidney cells uh, that we've seen. Okay, Still they look very different and perform different functions. How is this possible? Okay, um, How is this possible? But uh, don't worry, <laughs> the answer will come after the next slide. This here is a, a cross section through the scalp. Uh, scalp is uh, the skin of the head. And here again, we're able to see quite nicely the different dots here. All of these dots are um, are the different cells. And you can see over here, this here is uh, yeah, the surface uh, of the skin. And you can see that uh, the top layer of uh, the skin cells uh, yeah, is, uh, starts to shed off here. Um, but uh, those, uh, yeah, cells of the scalp, uh, yeah, of course, I don't know if we're able to find it. There is some, you know, some fat tissues in here. But if we're able uh, to, if we're a little bit lucky, we might actually also see, um, yeah, the formation of hair. Wow, look at this. There are again, uh, yeah, some huge uh, cells over here. And look at this here. This seems to be the place where hair is made, okay? And I think this red thing that you see over here, this is actually a little uh, yeah, part of, of hair which is being formed. So there's the cells around here that you see, they are responsible 
for making the hair protein. Again, very different, uh, very different shape, function and sizes. Um, you have again different uh, tissues over here. I don't know, maybe um, also fat tissues for fat storage uh, in the skin, of course, very important. Um, we've got some, uh, yeah, some, some muscles uh, that are able to uh, pull on the hair and to rise the hair even. Um, so that's uh, sometimes, especially when you're cold, then you might be ab able to notice that some of the hair, especially um, on, on, on your hands, they start to stand up. So there are muscles involved here um, that basically pull the hair up. So there are quite a, a few uh, structural adaptations here. And yeah, all of those cells have the same DNA. I think I need to answer now uh, the question how this is possible um, that uh, even though the DNA is the same that the cells perform different functions and the thing is the following is that the cells even though they have the same DNA not all of the DNA is actually also used and what we biologists say expressed. The purpose of DNA is, is to code for proteins. There are many many different proteins in a human body in human cells um, and uh, those proteins are the structures that actually do the tasks. They actually do the work in a cell. And how to make those proteins? This information is stored in the cell, in the DNA of the cells. However, not all of the DNA is always needed. And uh, to give you an example, my skin cells, they contain, of course, also the DNA, how to digest food, even though their responsibility, their responsibility is not to digest food. They still carry this DNA, but this DNA is not used. It's packaged away. Um, and it is not active. And uh, different cells have different parts of the DNA that are active and therefore the different cells are able to make different proteins and therefore uh, they're able to do different tasks. And uh, this is basically the answer to this, uh, um, to this mystery, how it is possible to have so many different cells. At the beginning, when um, we were all a fertilized egg cell, a zygote, but those uh, very basic cells had the potential to make other cell types. And those cells that you see here are so-called differentiated cells, the differentiated skin cells, and they do not have the possibility to form different cell types anymore uh, because they are already skin cells. Um, and uh, the cells are already differentiated and uh, part of the DNA that is not used is packaged away. And therefore it is not possible to convert those skin cells now to, I don't know, other cell types that we have seen. Um, at least uh, this is not possible uh, naturally, but uh, let me assure you that scientists are working on this um, possibility as well. But I would like to now talk a little bit about this big unsolved mystery or still this scientific problem that many biology, that bio, we still have in biology, and that is the following. Even though um, the information is stored on the DNA, um, on how um, the different cell types and the different tissue types is, this is where exactly on the DNA is the information coded how I as a person should look like anatomically. So for example, where in the DNA are we able to find the information that I have to have one nose here, hmm. two eyes, a mouth. Where, where can you find this information? It is stored on the DNA, but it is not possible to locate it. So the question um, of uh, morphogenesis, as it's called, um, of how to make uh, yeah, a, a, a living multicellular organism, this information, even though it is stored on the DNA, um, we don't know where it is exactly. I mean, it is stored a little bit, as I would say, between the lines. It's an, what we call biology, we biologists call this also an emergent property, um, where certain features and properties appear out of the interaction of many, many uh, different uh, uh, parts. And uh, for this reason, how um, you have uh, all of this information stored um, in the DNA is still one of the biggest uh, mysteries uh, in, in, in biology. So if I give you a piece of DNA um, and uh, or the DNA of an organism, um, yeah, and I ask you how does the organism look like, then you're not able to read it out of the DNA directly. Okay, um, yeah, so you have to actually um, let the cell divide and let the organism form and develop so that until you're able to see um, how it actually uh, looks like. Uh, but you're not able to read it directly out of the DNA. And that's still one of the unsolved mysteries here. Well, um, yeah. Um, as we look um, through all of those uh, cells uh, that I showed you right now, I have to tell you I'm always uh, very fascinated um, by the complexity of nature and the complexity of life. I hope that you liked the video. Um, if you did, I do invite you to subscribe to this channel. Of course, do leave your comments behind uh, below. 
I wish you all the best, a happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.